This tutorial addresses a tricky annuity question. For example, let's say that I was saving up for my child's education. It's probably going to cost me an arm and a leg. So I'm going to start about six years prior to them going off to university. I'm probably going to put in the exact same payment every year. Maybe that's all I can afford, about $1,500 every single year. So when I put this money into some sort of an investment, that investment is going to give me 7% per annum, so every year, but they're compounding semi-annually, which is kind of weird. If I'm putting in the amount of money only once a year, it's kind of strange that I'm getting the interest twice a year. So these aren't really matching the annual payments and the semi-annual interest. This is going to make it difficult to calculate how much money I'm actually going to get in the end, or in other words, my annuity. So there's going to be two different methods we're talking about in this tutorial about how to find that final annuity. Okay, so here's method number one. If we know that we're actually making $1,500 payments every year on an annual basis, why don't we just change our 7% nominal interest rate to an effective interest rate because an effective interest rate is annual and then that annual compounding period will match the annual um, payments of $1,500. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the effective rate formula and then we're going to start subbing in our nominal information. So 0 0.07 for our interest rate, semi-annual, and remember that your N up here is also 2. Okay, and then what we're going to do is do the division, add them together, and then exponent, and lastly subtract 1, and I get this answer, which is about 7.12%. So very similar to this, but this guy is going to give me that interest rate um, every year. Okay, so once a year. Then what we're going to do is, now that we have our new interest rate, we're going to use that in order to find out what our annuity will be. Okay, so we use the annuity formula. We put in our regular investment, so that was a $1,500 deposit, and our I is now not the 7% semi-annual, it's going to be this 7.12% annual. Okay, so it's right here and right here, and we're talking about six years, so then the six goes up here. Now remember, these blue numbers and the green number are not going to change because it's compounded annually. So that one for the annual is already affecting those numbers. Then we're just going to do bed mass. So addition, right here, exponent, and then minus one. Then you're going to times the 1500 and divide by this number. So I skipped quite a couple steps. But it looks like at the end of the six years, I'm going to get $10,763.17. Let's take a look at another method. Here's method number two, using a geometric series formula to figure out the annuity. So this right here represents the geometric series. Each of the arrows is pointing at one of the term values of the geometric series. So this is the first term value, or your A. This is the second term value, and so on up until your last term value. Now, since it's a geometric series, you're going to be adding each of those term values together in order to get your annuity at the very end, or your sum. That should make sense because if I'm going to be making these deposits every single year of $1,500, they're going to gain interest, and eventually I'm going to add all of those up, and hopefully by the end of six years, I can use that sum total, or the annuity, to pay off my child's education. Now, what I'm going to do is explain each of these numbers in a little bit more detail. This is just your nominal interest rate affected by the compounding period. So it's a 7% divided by 2 to get the semi-annual. This one's a little bit more tricky. The exponents. Now, this is a 0 because the last payment, or I guess deposit, of $1,500 will not have enough time in order to gain interest whereas this very first deposit has a lot of time to gain interest and that's why the exponent is a little bit bigger. So if it's a zero, it's going to make this entire bracket into a one and then 1500 times one is just the original 1500, reiterating the point that basically 
you're not going to be gaining interest off of that last deposit. What's going to happen though is let's say this deposit, it has two chances to gain interest until the very end and that's why we have to the power of two. Even this very last deposit has 10, I know you can't see it here, but 10 jumps until the very end of the six years, so 10 chances to gain interest. But if it's gaining interest semi-annual for six years, shouldn't we see a 12 somewhere, a, an exponent 12? Well, the last two numbers are these two parts right here. So you won't be gaining interest on these two because we haven't deposited anything yet. And that happens at the end of the first year. Okay, so it only goes up to 10, not 12. Now that we have each of our term values, I'm going to take a look at the geometric series. So again, the very first term is the 1500. Because it's to the power of 0, it's going to make everything 1. And then I get my A value. Now the second term value is to the power of 2. Remember we saw that right up here? And we're going to calculate what that equals to. Now if we divide this one, T2, by T1, and we know it's geometric, that's going to give us our ratio. So what's multiplying each time? I took T2 divided by T1, and let's see what I got. Okay, so it looks like the R is about 1.035 to the power of 2. And I guess you could evaluate that if you really wanted to. Finally, what I'm going to do now is figure out the annuity using the geometric formula. Okay, so here's a geometric sum formula, and I needed my A, which I got. I need an R, which I just found. My N is going to be six years, and then I have all the rest. Okay, so we're going to just sub everything in, $1,500. We just found the rate, squared, and then also to the power of six. Okay, and then we have our rate again. And again, it was squared because we still had that part right here. Do a little bed mass, figure out this, to the power of 6, minus 1, I get this. And then times the 1500 divided by my bottom, and I get the exact same thing we got in the first method. Okay, and then a quick therefore statement at the end.